NBC presents Willard Waterman as The Great Gildersleeve. Written by John Elliott and Andy White. Five nights a week, NBC brings you the transcribed adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Hello, folks. We're all here. Leroy, Bertie, Mr. Peavy, and all your friends in Summerfield. <laughs> here right now, though. We'd like to have you listen to a question that is being asked all over the United States about Viceroy cigarettes. What have Viceroy's got that other filter-tip cigarettes haven't got? What have Viceroy's got that other filter-tip cigarettes haven't got? What have Viceroy's got that other filter-tip cigarettes haven't got? Yes, what have Viceroy's got? The answer is 20,000 tiny filters in every Viceroy tip. That's right. Inside every Viceroy tip is a vast network of 20,000 individual filters to filter your smoke over and over again. You get only the full, rich taste of Viceroy's choice tobaccos. And Viceroy's draw freely, smoothly. So the next time you hear this question, What have Viceroy's got that other filter tip cigarettes haven't got? You know the answer. 20,000 tiny filters in every Viceroy tip. No wonder more people smoke Viceroy's than any other filter tip cigarette in the world. Get Viceroy's today. King size filter tip. Only a penny or two more than cigarettes without filters. For the past few weeks, the great Gildersleeve's life has been little short of hectic. Right now, the busy water commissioner is trying to reach Miss Mary Easton on the telephone. His nephew, Leroy, is impatiently waiting for a little attention. Here in a minute, Leroy. He said that ten minutes ago. Well, I'd like to see how Miss Easton's getting along as receptionist for Dr. Olson. Yeah, I can't help it if Olson's line is always busy. Well, maybe that's because you're always calling Miss Easton. Yeah, my boy. Say, why can't you pump up your own football? A pump will work. Could be the valve. Yeah, you work on it. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll help him. He just shouldn't be so impatient. Yeah, let's see. How many numbers did I dial? You have to start over. Interruption. Yes, please. Yes, Bertie. Excuse me. Why interrupt you? Yeah, that's all right. Here, what is it, Bertie? I interrupted you, didn't I? No, no, no. What do you want, Bertie? Yes, I did. You was making a phone call, and I interrupted you. Bertie, what can I do for you? I, I just wondered if you know Leroy's football pump won't work. Yes, and I'm going to fix it right after I talk to Miss Easton. That's good. How's your Miss Easton getting along as Dr. Olson receptionist? She isn't my Miss Easton, Bertie. No, sir, but I take it you don't want her to be Dr. Olson's Miss Easton, either. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that pushy Olson hadn't given Mary a job. He tries to move in on every girl I know. Hey, Aunt, when are you going to help me? In a minute, Leroy. Oh, sure, God. If the line's busy this time. Oh, for... Yeah, what a wasted morning. Oh, well, Dr. Olson has that much business. He can't be spending his time taking Mary out for coke. <laughs> Leroy! He ain't here, Mr. Gillespie. Well, he was a minute ago. I'm ready to fix his pump. Well, he ain't here now. He went out the back way and slammed the door. He did? Guess he got tired waiting. Oh, that's too bad. I wonder where his pump is. I think I heard him throw something in the corner of the service court. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's the broken pump and his deflated football. Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess I should have forgotten about the phone call and helped the boy. Yes, sir. Of course, I'm a busy man. I can't just drop everything. Yes, sir. You're busy, all right. <laughs> yeah, and I hate to have him feel I'm neglecting him. Bertie, you think I hurt the boy? All I know is there's a broken pump and a deflated football. Hmm. <laughs> I feel deflated myself. <laughs> What can I do for you today? Petey, do you know how to fix one of these little football pumps? What's wrong with it? It won't pump. Well, you should have fixed it, Mr. Gildersleeve. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's a good idea. A pump's no good if it won't pump. Oh, dear. I'll have Charlie Anderson look at it out at the reservoir. Very well. I'm not mechanically minded. Yeah, I can see that. Mrs. Petey always fixed everything at home. She's a regular grease monkey. 
Of course, I don't call her that. <laughs> Why do you need the pump? Are you uh, going to inflate water prices again? Yeah, I'll see. It's Leroy. He got upset because I didn't repair it for him this morning. You don't say. In fact, he walked out and slammed the door. It doesn't sound like Leroy. Well, something else is bothering the boy. Could be he thinks I'm neglecting it. <laughs> you spend a lot of time with your girls. Yeah, true. Of course, a lot of it has been business. Oh, my, yeah. You see, the boy and I have become practically strangers. It should be. And he yearns for my company. That's why he comes up with things for me to fix. Yeah. What a fine boy. I think so, don't I? Yeah, I'll just have to spend more time with him. Stevie, I won't be able to go bowling with you and the judge tonight. Well, that's all right, Mr. Miller. Yeah, I'm going to lead a new life. Include Leroy and all my plans. Good for you. Yeah, I'll give up all these activities, including most of my dates with girls. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. The Great Gildersleeve will bounce right back. It's true that every state in these United States has a compulsory education law and non-sectarian state-controlled schools open free and equally to all. But in spite of all America has done to ensure its children an education, do you realize how inadequate our present school system is? With almost two million more children in schools now than at this time last year, three out of five classrooms in the nation are overcrowded. Yes, shortages exist now in the number of school buildings, in staff personnel, in transportation, textbooks, in almost every phase of schoolwork. Above all, the great need is for additional teachers, at least 118,000 new elementary teachers to take care of the increased enrollment. The crisis with which our public school system is faced is a challenge to all Americans. Something must be done at once. Take an interest in this problem by working with local civic groups and school boards. And for help in improving conditions, write to Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York City, for free information. When the great Gildersleeve feels he's made a mistake, he always tries hard to do something about it, sometimes a little too hard. He's convinced Leroy feels neglected, so he's going all out to prove he can be a pal. Yeah, I got your football pump fixed for you, Leroy, my boy. Yeah? Took it downtown, and now it's in tip-top shape. Well, you don't have to go out of your way, Unc. Do I want it to? Hey, let's go pump up your football. I had it pumped up at the corner gas station. Oh. Well, anyway, ready anytime you want to use it. Well, what do we do tonight, pal? What's this pal stuff, huh? <laughs> Guess I never called you that, have I? It's my fault. <laughs> Shall we go to a movie? Just you and I? Wouldn't you rather take one of your girlfriends? You've got a lot of them. No, my boy, don't take that attitude. Well, I'm just stating a fact. She's usually out with Miss Henshaw, Miss Easton, Miss Cuddle, Miss Kelly, Miss Stedman. Ms. But, Leroy, I'd much rather go to a movie with you than one of my girlfriends. Ah! He's going to be hard to crack. I'll see you around, Don. Leroy, if you don't want to go to a movie, what would you like to do tonight? You name it. I can do anything I want to? You bet. Okay. Better go upstairs and get my roller skates. Oop, roller skates? Yeah, he's down the ring. You said I could do anything I want to. Yes, indeed. I haven't roller skated for some time, but I'm game. You're not going, are you? Yeah, well, isn't that the idea? Well, you don't want to go roller skating with me. Why did you call one of your girls? Yeah, but Leroy. Go ahead. Live it up. I'll stop by for pictures. He, he's striking back at me. I've wounded him, and now he won't let me get near him. How you doing, Miss Gilsey? Miserably, Bertie. Yes, sir? He's totally indifferent to every suggestion I make. Yes, sir. Did he go up to his room to stall? No, he's going roller skating with Piggy. He's an active boy. He likes to roller skate and have outdoor fun. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess the movie did sound a little tame. Leroy, my boy. Yeah? It's tomorrow Saturday, and I have a great idea. Yeah? Yeah, the fall colors are beautiful. Why don't you and I go up to the woods together? Why? Yeah, spend the day tramping around, exploring, kicking through the leaves. I'm, I'm going to be too busy for that tomorrow. It'll leave I think of the fun we'll have. We'll go looking for acorns. Acorns? How corny can you get? Hmm. Bye, buddy. Bye, Uncle. Bye, Leroy. Bye, my boy. Now, I know I've injured him, Bertie. He never considered me corny before. Has he? <laughs> hmm, hmm. Uh, Yes, Leroy? You don't notice how funny Uncle's been acting? Well, he has been acting different. He's been hanging around wanting to do things with me. Maybe I've been neglecting him. You've been neglecting him? 
Today he wanted to go out in the woods and look for acorns. I'm too big for that stuff, Bertie. You are? That's for little kids and old guys like us. <laughs> oh, gosh, Bertie, I'm sorry if I hurt his feelings. But how am I going to let him know I have my own projects and my own gang? Oh, Leroy, I wouldn't worry about it if I was you. I can't help it. Every time I say I'm too busy to do something with him, he looks at me like a lost bloodhound. <laughs> that must be your uncle coming home from the office. He had a lot of work to do this morning. Yeah? Yeah, already. Leroy. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Miss Gilfrey. <laughs> What's the matter, Aunt? You know, work can get a little monotonous. Especially Saturday morning. Aunt. Yes, Leroy? I was just telling Bertie I sure would like to go looking for acorns with you this afternoon. Do what? You would? Yeah, I wasn't sure you really wanted to go at first. You have. Well, we have tramped through the woods all afternoon, just you and me. Look at home with a big bag of acorns on our back. Hmm. Excuse me, I'll get the phone. Yeah, Leroy, are you sure you want to go? Well, there's nothing I'd rather do. And you need the change. Let's go out and pal around. You have. Well, that's not me, it's for you. Let's marry you. Bill? Excuse me, Leroy. Oh, sure, that's okay. Stop looking at Mr. Gill's feet and run for that phone. Who's that? Hey, it's Piggy and the gang across the street. I wonder what they're going to do this afternoon. Well, Mary. Maybe Uncle forget about going for acorns. Could be. Leroy. Yeah? Do we have to go for acorns this weekend? Heck no. Hey, Piggy! <laughs> Nobody's being neglected around here. <laughs> Before a final word from the great Gildersleeve, here's a word for you. There's only one Groucho Marx, and the good news is that you can hear him tomorrow night in the funniest quiz show on the air, You Bet Your Life. You Bet Your Life, there's a 30-minute mix-up of questions, answers, and ad-libs by the irrepressible master of the ad-lib, Groucho. You may hear right answers, you may hear wrong answers, but one thing you can be sure of, you'll hear funny answers when Groucho and the contestants get together. Come on along and join the fun tomorrow with Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life. And don't forget your other big Wednesday favorites. There's the big story to bring you a true and dramatic account of the newspaper world behind the scenes. Walk a Mile, an entertaining and informative quiz starring the popular Bill Cullen and Fibber McGee and Molly, your longtime favorites, with another humorous adventure at Wistful Vista. And, of course, our own Gildy. Stay with NBC tomorrow and every Wednesday night for You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx and an exciting lineup of other great shows. Every day, it's the best in listening here on NBC Radio. Did you have a good time this afternoon, Leroy? Yeah, we showed up and played football. My side won. Good boy. How about you and Miss Easton? Yeah, we took a little ride through the woods. Very pleasant. Not keen. The kids are coming over tonight to play ping pong, okay? Sure. I was going to take Mary to a movie if you didn't want to do anything. We understand each other, Aunt. Yeah. Just leave, just look at call. He did? He wanted to remind you of a very important jolly boys meeting tonight. Zeke, there goes my movie with Mary. Oh, uh, maybe you should call him back and say you and I might want to do something together tonight and you've been neglecting me. Leroy, you are a pal. So are you, Aunt. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gilded Leaf is played by Willard Waterman and is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production directed by Virgil Reimer. Included in the cast were Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang inviting you to listen again tomorrow night when The Great Gilded Leaf tries to maneuver an invitation to the mayor's Halloween party. Here are the special program, Elections 1954, tonight on most NBC radio stations.